on both fronts in which they've counterattacked, those advances go in phases. And so they're taking something of a pause, I think, in the Luhansk while they reposition. And in the Kherson Oblast, again, the same. They've moved towards Novoklokovka and they're closing in toward Kherson, which will be a, quite a tough nut to crack, I think. And they are repositioning after some rapid advances. On the Russian side, they're digging in um, and, in a sense, playing for time for the winter when we assume that the front lines will stabilise a little bit, or they may assume that. Um, and there will un undoubtedly, in my view, be a big Russian second offensive uh, sometime early next year or as the weather begins to change again towards the spring. I think the key in the Kherson uh, area is, at the moment, is Novokokovka because that is the, the city, as it were, uh, to the north, northeast of Kherson, and that controls both the, the dam uh, on the Dnieper River, which, is, which helps control the water supply into Crimea. There's also a big hydroelectric power uh, plant there. It's also um, a natural bridge across the Dnieper River. And if the Ukrainians take Novokokovka, then it's entirely plausible, in my view, that they would they would send forces over the dam across the bridge, in effect, um, and then they'd be on the eastern side of the Dnieper River, and they'd be in a position then to begin to encircle Kherson itself further south. And so I would expect them to make Novokovka their first objective as a prelude, as a stepping off place to an encirclement of Kherson, um, and the point there would be they don't want to fight for that city. They don't want to have to fight their way into their own city, still less bombard it. But what they're working to do is to insulate uh, Russian troops, uh, make sure that they can't be supplied and then force them either to withdraw or have to surrender. Um, if the, and that's what they've been doing elsewhere. They're not being conducting pitched battles. There's no account of any big pitched battles, even though they've made big gains. And that's because they're, they're conducting a very careful and clever offensive, series of offensives, by constantly surrounding Russian forces and either making them withdraw or making them surrender. They're having fuel issues in Kherson. They've got problems with their frontline troops. And so they're not in a position either to defend dynamically um, or still less to conduct a counteroffensive. So the Russians are digging in. The Ukrainians know that they've got them dug in, as it were, and are just reworking their forces for another push, I guess, on both fronts. If there were to be another front opened in this war, if the, if the uh, Kremlin decided to open up a, a, another invasion, from, say, uh, in the northwest of Ukraine, from Belarusian territory, which is plausible in, in geographic terms, it wouldn't be soon because they're in no position to do it for a little while. It's possible. It might happen. Um, if it did, I suspect it would be the other side of Christmas uh, because it will take them some time to put forces together. Uh, and the Ukrainians won't be too worried about this at the moment because the Ukrainians could easily deal with it. However, it would be a distraction. It would mean that they'd have to take some of their good forces away from the offensives in the Donbass and their offensives in the Kherson Oblast to deal with it. And so in that respect, it would be unwelcome. But the Ukrainian general staff are very canny. They are very smart. They know what they're doing. And they're watching really carefully what is happening in Belarus. And it's fair to say at the moment, they're not too bothered.